Well, it really goes back to when we moved over to Linux for a lot of our servers, and we realized the flexibility of open source computing. And it got to the point where we realized, why, why don't we have that in our network? And we even thought about, at one point, like, wow, we can't wait for the day that we can actually have you know, Linux on, on a switch because of the flexibility. And the power of being able to do that is very freeing. Over the last few years, OCP networking has been shaping the industry and strengthening the open networking movement. I am Carlos Cardenas, co-chair of the Open Compute Networking Group. Over the next few minutes, y'all will be seeing the progression of the last few years and what the future has in store. OCP Networking Group started in May 2013 with the focus of desegregation of the networking hardware and software with hardware contributions by a variety of different vendors. The OCP Networking Group has helped shape and steer the industry's objective around SDN, promoting a vision of networking technology that is fully desegregated and open, Broadcom as the industry pioneer of merchants networking silicon has been there since the beginning as an early stage contributor and advocate of the OCP agenda. It shares the goals of enabling rapid innovation in the networking space. Mellanox is proud to offer a choice in high bandwidth silicon for the industry, most recently with our Spectrum product. Our participation in OCP covers hardware contributions such as product design packages, along with software participation such as ONI, SI, and SwitchDev. At KVM, we are very excited to be part of the OCP ecosystem. We support and encourage open technologies and the open sharing of ideas to foster innovation. We are working with a community of developers to expand the number of OCP platforms. OCP is a tremendous platform. It allows us to sell our extensible switch solutions to customers who can take this open hardware and personalize the platform and the hardware to cater to their needs. Think about it, you're gonna walk into an OCP shopping complex and pick up a OCP box, pick up a software which is open. So you can really pick this off-the-shelf hardware and cater to the deployment scenarios where you're looking into putting the box. OCP now has the ability to purchase the equipment directly from the vendors, or you can go through a system integrator like Dell or HP, allowing him to utilize their existing support and services contracts. We quickly learned that open hardware contributions, including specs and schematics, wasn't enough we had to build the ecosystem around the hardware. The first piece of the puzzle is an OCP project called ONI, the Open Networking Install Environment. ONI is an open source initiative that defines a clean and simple provisioning framework for open networking hardware. Using this framework, operating system vendors can target a variety of open hardware platforms. For end users, ONI enables modern, scalable, and automated deployments. Here we have OCP installing a network operating system using ODI. Notice how OCP is able to kick back and relax and allow ONI to do its job installing the network operating system. Since 2013, the ONI enabled networking ecosystem has flourished. As the end users vote with their dollars, the hardware vendors continue adding ONI platforms to their portfolio. Today, the ONI project hosts over 80 hardware platforms from more than 12 different hardware vendors. On average, the project adds 15 new platforms every quarter. ONI enables an open networking ecosystem where end users have a choice among hardware platforms and operating systems. 
Next, we have a project aimed at reducing the time it takes to port a given NOS to new hardware called ACPI Platform Description, or APD. ACPI is the existing platform description standard that all server, laptop, and desktop manufacturers have been using for the last 20 years. APD applies these standards to network devices. APD enables hardware vendors to describe their hardware in a machine-readable format and embed that description into system firmware. From there, a networking operating system will retrieve the description and automatically configure the necessary drivers and subsystems. Notice how long it's taken him to configure the NOS. Now take a look at Alternative OCP. With APD, OCP is able to configure the NOS with ease and support many new OCP switches. APD reduces the time it takes to support new platforms and helps build the expectation that any open networking device and operating system will just work. This brings us to another OCP project called the Switch Abstraction Interface, or SI. Switch Abstraction Interface, or SI, came into existence as network operators started seeking ways to adopt a more dynamic, programmable infrastructure. This helps us to keep the base router platform simple, consistent, and stable. It breaks the software-hardware coupling and allows us to pick the best fit of software and hardware on a need-by-application or a need-by-network basis. By providing simple, consistent interfaces for applications and protocol stacks that orchestrate and automate cloud services, it helps consume the underlying complex and heterogeneous hardware easily. This helps in shifting our focus to applications that require integrating our network with the cloud. SI is therefore a big step in open networking software. And finally, the last piece of the puzzle, interoperability testing. As 100 gigabit Ethernet transitions from the standards process into the marketplace, Mellanox is excited to be a participant in the OCP Interop Testing Initiative. This program unites end users, NOS vendors, hardware manufacturers, along with network interface and pluggable module suppliers, all testing compatibility together. Flex Optics has built its business around providing compatibility for closed vendor systems, so we were delighted to participate in the industry's first Interop plug fest in September 2015, held at the UNH Interop Lab. The results of this plug fest are readily available on a public website hosted at the Interop Lab. Take a look at OCP. He's trying to do it yourself method. Good luck, OCP. Notice how angry he gets when things just don't work. Here we have OCP utilizing the list provided by IOL that shows compliance between the hardware, the software, and the modules. This list allows end users to buy with confidence, knowing that our tested optics comply with the numerous switches and network operating systems in the OCP ecosystem. A more recent initiative within OCP is the telco industry, leveraging all the OCP technologies from server to networking. AT&T has adopted an architecture we call Domain 2.0. It makes use of common infrastructure to support as much of our business activities as we can make fit. We want the infrastructure to be innovative, flexible, and free of vendor lock-in. So I've been working on a set of applications that use OCP servers, switches, and new telco devices. Those applications include consumer broadband access, metro business service, and mobility. We're open sourcing the software in conjunction with ON Labs in what they call CORD, or central office re-architected as a data center. Here at OCP, I've been working in the new Telco working group to develop an open spec for gigabit fiber access technology called GPON. The last few years have been very exciting in the industry as open networking has changed the face of data center networking. We have seen the hyperscale vendors embrace it with open arms. We have seen the adoption with smaller customers from police departments churches, along with a good portion of the Fortune 500. In 2016, we intend to strengthen the open networking movement 
by doubling down on data center with the latest 100 gig devices and chassis-based systems, along with moving into the campus networking space, essentially unlocking another isolated, closed ecosystem, allowing the end user to choose the best hardware and software for their solution, along with the freedom to change any part of their stack without lock-in. With the uh, equipment that we had, we were at a disadvantage with the uh, licensed features that were available to us and trying to move forward in the data center and use newer technologies just wasn't really going to work for us as an educational institution. Going with Tony and the, the flexibility that it provides, we're able to research features that we can be able to use that weren't available to us with our equipment. As a previous victim of vendor lock-in, it's kind of like someone opening the cell door. 